Brother Mark Essex was born in Emporia, Kansas. His friends remembered him as a quiet, happy person who had talked about becoming a minister. Essex joined the United States Navy while he was allegedly subjected to racism from white people. He was given a general discharge for unsuitability on, on February 10, 1971 for character and behavior disorders. After his discharge, he became involved with black radicals in San Francisco and later joined the New York Black Panther Party. Due to his unauthorized absence, he was discharged for unsuitability on February 10, 1971 for alleged character disorder. Soon after his exodus from the Navy, he became serious about becoming a Black Panther fighting for black liberation. His start began in San Francisco where he later became a Black Panther in New York. In 1972, Brother Essex moved to New Orleans and worked in vending machine repair. In November 1972, there was an incident that engulfed Essex with fury. During the civil rights protest demonstration, two black students were shot and killed by New Orleans police. The sign was clear to Essex, as was the solar eclipse to Nat Turner. Being young, black, Living in the South with racism, Mark Essex began a guerrilla warfare campaign, a seek and destroy mission of white people. His sole intent was to enact revenge for the brutality of African people in America. The largest wall was practically covered with the word Africa, which was painted in wavy letters three feet high and bordered with black margins. Beneath it in red was written, My destiny lies in the bloody death of racist pigs. The words destiny and death were underlined. In some places, the paint had run in streaks. Next to the slogan, Revolutionary Justice is Black Justice, was the word blood, and above that, the letters KKK, also painted in red, blonde hair, and blue eyes. The words hate and killed were splashed everywhere, seemingly at random. Next to the word Africa was scrawled, hate white people, beast of the earth. Inside the giant sea of Africa, Essex had carefully penciled in, the quest for freedom is death, then by death I shall escape to freedom. Near the ceiling was spelled out, the third world, kill pig Nixon and all his running dogs. No inch of wall space was spared. Lifting their heads, detectives saw in bold red letters, only a pig would read shit on the ceiling. There were also dozens of words in African dialect. Language experts later said that six of the words were clearly Swahili, and many of the others appeared to be misspelling of Swahili words. Six of them, experts said, referred to animals that have symbolic meaning in African folklore. One of them, the Pangolian, is sacred to natives of the Congo. Two other words that referred to animals were bata, meaning duck in Swahili, and genet, a species of African cat. Other words were included, such as mata, meaning bow and arrow in Swahili, and in Spanish, kill. Baraza, a Swahili word that connotes a place where courts or councils meet. Baba, meaning father, and kumbaba, meaning to be firm in demanding one's right to show fight. Two photographers from the crime lab took videotapes and pictures of the apartment. The FBI also sent a photographer. Finally, the police began sorting through Essex possessions. Besides the map and a few pieces of furniture, these included two rolls of bell wire, two canvas cartridge belts, a large M80 firecracker, a 1973 horoscope book, several cans of spray paint, an aluminum cheese schrader with congealed particles of an unknown green vegetable matter, military foot powder, a double-edged razor, four pairs of navy pants, a navy trench coat, a small black patch with the embroidered words, by the grace of Malcolm, I am a new African. 1973, three black snipers set fire to this hotel in downtown New Orleans and kill guests in their rooms. 
including a young doctor on his honeymoon. Other guests flee to the balconies, trapped between flames and bullets. A terrified black maid is told, don't worry, we're only shooting whites today. Then the snipers barricade themselves on the roof and shoot arriving firemen. The chief of police is killed during the first assault. Two snipers are killed by a nighttime helicopter assault. There he is. I think you got him. Yeah, he's dead. But the leader continues shooting from the rooftop bunker. He is Robert Essex, 23, recently discharged from the Navy, living in this apartment, covered with anti-white slogans. The attack force carefully moves onto the roof and prepares to charge the bunker. snipers are dead, but they have shot policemen, firemen, hotel employees, and guests. Like most snipers, they make no attempt to escape, as if committing suicide. Mark Essex's body arrived in Wichita by commercial jetliner on Thursday and was transferred to a white hearse for a 75-mile journey to Emporia. The funeral was held Saturday morning at St. James Baptist Church. The black coffin was covered with roses and wreaths. On one of the satin banners was written, Jimmy, and on the other, Power to the People. The small chapel was filled and the crowd gathered outside the steps and sidewalks. There were many reporters and television cameras. The afternoon of the funeral, the Cleaver faction of the Black Panther Party in New York sent the Essexes a telegram. It read, we, the Black Panther Party, take this opportunity to extend our profound condolences. The loss of your son was a loss to the revolutionary ranks and the black revolution, revolutionary struggle as a whole. Mark Essex was a black man, warrior, and a revolutionary. He would never really die as long as the will to struggle is alive in the hearts and souls of black Americans. All power to the people. That same week, Stokely Carmichael, also known as Kwame Ture, praised Essex in Newark, New Jersey. Speaking to a black audience at Weehawkic High School, Carmichael, the former chairman of the Students' Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, said, we should study and learn from the actions of Brother Mark Essex. We should understand that Brother Essex carried out our struggle to its next quantitative level, the level of science. Much later, Mrs. Essex spoke with a journalist in front of her house on Cottonwood Avenue. She was bitter and sharp tongue. Her grief seemed without remorse. Do you know how many times my son was shot? She said with blunt suddenness. I talked to them about that. Asked them why they shot him so many times. An officer who examined Essex's body in the morgue counted at least 200 bullet holes. The gold bladder was the only organ not destroyed by rifle fire. There was no reason for them to do that to my boy. I'll tell you this, though, they're going to remember him. The same old discrimination that made my son do what he did is just as strong as it ever was, and it will drive others to violence just like it did Jimmy. It can't be helped. I'm sorry. 